So, as you can see here, this is my motorized bicycle build. This is actually, actually iteration number two of this particular build. Uh, the engine down here was something that I purchased last summer uh, as a means to get around. It was uh, mounted onto a mountain bike frame at the time, which worked fairly well, but I had some minor issues with it. Uh, my chain clearance was not the greatest, particularly at the rear fork. Uh, I was having issues at the rear fork back here where the chain would rub on the inside of the fork. And I didn't like that for a couple of reasons, one of which being uh, that it was wearing away at the frame and I didn't want to have it weaken the integrity of that frame too much where it would start to bend or possibly even break. So, this past spring, uh, I got my stimulus and being the goober I am, decided to spend a portion of it on what you see here. Uh, this is a vintage English bike from Hercules brand. As you can see here on our case badge, you might be able to make that out. The shadow is kind of messing it up, but it's uh, Hercules Birmingham, England. Uh, this is a 60s, I want to say mid 60s era based on the design and some of the other elements of this bike. Uh, vintage frame. And I saw this on my local Facebook marketplace and knew what I had to do. <laughs> I knew it had to happen. So this is the progress that we've made uh, since I did that back in April. Um, we're now three months into this and it's been an iter iterative process. And today we've got some cool stuff going on. Today is two, two things primarily on the docket. First of all, I'm replacing my crank set, uh, the cranks themselves. The spindle and, and bearings are fine, but <laughs> my right side crank got stripped out because I didn't tighten my pedal well enough. And that's my jury-rigged uh, Oyerish engineered solution right there. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna take that off, I'm gonna take the cranks off. Probably gonna need to lengthen my chain for the new crank set, but I don't know for certain. Um, but I think that'll be all right. I think I can make that work or else I can go buy a new chain if I have to. I don't want to, but if I have to, so be it. Um, so, and then the other thing we're doing is we're doing some lighting. You got the headlamp here up front, and I've got an LED light strip taped to the cargo rack here that you can't really see because my box is in the way. <laughs> uh, as you see kind of in here, I've got two lantern batteries set up here in parallel to my switch going out to my lights. And one of the things that I want to do next is add turn signals. I want to add some turn signals to this bike that I can use at night so that, uh, you know, I'm not throwing hand signals and hoping that the person behind me is paying attention. So, unfortunately, those two little batteries are not enough. They don't power, they don't provide enough current to drive a relay. So, to that end, I've got a very small, itty-bitty little baby power sport battery that I just picked up at the parts store. It was the smallest one they had. It's just a little 12-volt, uh, 50-amp battery, and I'm going to wire it all up. I'm going to put a 10-amp fuse on my positive before the switch, and then hopefully, hopefully I don't blow anything up. I also got a new socket. I got an automotive-style socket to put, in my, uh, to put in my light lamp here, my headlamp. So I'm going to get started on some of that. Unfortunately, I won't be able to record any of the process, but uh, I will check back in once we've made some progress. All right. So, here's what we got going on here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on this little table that I've got set up as my temporary workstation, so we'll try to go through as much of it as possible just to give you an idea of the objective. We've got our 12 volt, 50 amp power sport battery. This is just a little itty bitty one, about the smallest you can get. That guy is going to sit on this lid. What I'm going to do is I'm basically going to flip my, my little plastic tote. is going to sit upside down on my cargo rack. The lid is going to be the base. I'm going to take and cut off a piece of this pine board and put it in this like indentation on the top of the lid so I can screw this, screw it together basically. Screw down the lid to this wood so that I have a nice stable like backing for it because the battery I'm thinking the idea I had was to take these little 
half length PCI covers, PCI slot covers. Those of you who have some computer knowledge will recognize them fairly easily. And this will be my, my like my kind of makeshift battery bracket of sorts so that it doesn't slide around a whole lot. Um, and then I have another one here that's a full length. I don't know if I'd be able to like make that something to hold it down or how I could necessarily do that. But that's that's what I'm thinking here is just at least at least have it like that. And then I can actually, if I wanted to, I could just use some tape to reinforce it. Duct tape always works. <laughs> uh, that's the that's the old adage anyway. So. We got our wire, we got some, some disconnects and some ring connectors, butt connectors. We got our relay in there as well. Uh, we got a red marker light for, that's going to be our new tail light. We've got our amber markers, which are going to be our turn signals. And then we've got a socket here and a bulb for, I'm going to gut the headlamp and put that socket in there with that bulb. And of course we've got our odds and ends. We got wire and tape and, and heat shrink tubing. Uh, you know, all of the stuff to try and get this done. Some tools over here. We've also got a hot glue gun and soldering iron, solder, uh, wire nuts and stuff. So that's what we're looking at. That's what it's going to look like. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started trying to put together what we're going to do here. Uh, let me see here. Where did I put those? I had some fuses as well. There they are. So I got these little uh, 10 amp fuses. Don't know how well these are going to work because they are, A, smaller than I wanted. I wanted to try and find the larger ones that are 10 amp, but I can't find them. So, we're going to try those, and I'm going to see if I can make it work with these disconnects. I don't, I, I'm concerned that it's not going to work, but huh, we'll see what we can do. And once, once I've made some progress with this, I will cut back and show you guys what's going on. BRB. It all works. It's all working. All right, let's talk about it. So, 12 volt battery mounted to the case, mounted to the bottom with our little pieces of metal. Uh, that comes out to our 10, 10 amp fuse right there. Fuse then goes to our switch, main switch right over here on this side. That is circuit on right here. This turns on the complete circuit. And that center is off. This is also off because it's a three-way switch and I don't have anything wired up this way yet. Brake light works, or uh, not brake light, it's a tail light. Uh, I'd like to get some kind of brake light solution at some point later on, but that is not a, as big of a deal because most people just go around me anyway. So, <clears throat> whatever. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I call successful little project here. It took me all day. So, I'm going to go pass out now. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like, thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things, click the buttons, just, you know, show, show support. i got to clean up a mess, um, and then i got to put this guy away. So, later.
we're back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tack this on at the end of the video just kind of as a wrap up and to kind of show you how things have been going. I've been riding the bike here for a couple of days now uh, with my new lighting system all set up and running. I haven't really used it at night. Uh, I haven't really been out after dark with this thing lately at this point. Uh, this coming week I'll have time. I'll, I'll have a couple shifts at my job where I'll be leaving in the evening where after it'll be dark so I'll be able to run it at night see how uh, see how things work as far as nighttime visibility I think it'll work pretty well um, a couple things I did off camera uh, as you can see I tweaked my battery bracket system here because these front and back brackets with the battery <coughs> batteries may be about I'll say maybe two pound if that roughly somewhere in that range and with the braking and acceleration it was shifting forward and back as I expected it to and it starts to bend both of these bracket pieces out away from the battery and I didn't like that one bit so bent them back in place and you just took a zip tie and ran a zip tie through it to tighten it up and keep that battery nice and secure and it's great the only downside of course if I ever have to take the battery out I have to cut the zip tie and replace it, but zip ties are friggin' cheap, so I don't care. Uh, just Redneck Solutions, folks. Redneck Solutions right here. Um, there are a couple things I might try to change about this as far as how I've got my wiring set up, but it's really... For now, it's good enough. For now, it's good enough. And to some of you who might be asking, you know, a lot of people are going to ask, well, why did you go through this trouble when... There are already products on the market, self-contained products that do pretty much exactly what you've done here, that provide you turn signals, that provide you a tail light, you know, you have your self-contained headlights that go on your handlebars. Why did you do this? You know, you could have just gone the easy way. And I, and I was using those kinds of products in the past. I had, you know, a handlebar mounted LED light that ran on like four double A's, and then I had a tail light that... I would stick to a part somewhere um, on my bike when I when the clip before the clip broke because the clip broke on that one. But um, the thing I, I I didn't like about those is a um, you have to keep all kinds of batteries on hand. If those lights, if the batteries start to get low on any of those lights, you you really have to go through and, and keep whatever batteries you need on hand, whether they're double A's, triple A's, whatever. <clears throat> And I mean, it's not that I don't keep those on hand already for my other devices, but it's just something that I that doesn't appeal to me necessarily. Second reason, learning experience. I wanted to learn a little more about like automotive electrical systems, and this is kind of a very simplified idea of that concept, you know? You have your battery, you have your fuses, you have your relays and switches and all of the routing for the wiring and all of that. I've done some basic, like, electrical wiring in the past, mostly for things like audio systems in cars that I've owned in the past, but nothing this extreme, nothing this complex. Um, so this is an opportunity for me to kind of gain some experience points, if you will, if you'll, you, if you'll accept that metaphor. Um, so, you know, there are a couple things I want to change maybe a little bit about this, like my box up here where I keep my toggle switch for my indicator lights. It's functional but uh it, the form could use some work function came before form with a lot of this and i'd like to i'd like to try and make some changes and just uh one thing i want also want to do is get some conduit some black uh wire conduit to bundle all these wires coming up to the front of the frame so that i they're they're a protected and b it looks a little cleaner um so that may be a thing i do probably next week like, I don't know, either next week or the following week, I'm not sure, um, whenever I have a paycheck and have the extra dollars to say, oh, I'll buy a roll of conduit real quick. Of course, I'll end up having more than I'll ever use, but that's whatever, that's my problem to deal with. Um, <laughs> so, a couple other things that I need to do here, I need to tighten up my power distribution over here, my pass-through from the back 
inside to the outside of the box. Because I did lose, and I replaced it since, but I did lose a nut on my solid positive out here. Um, so I'm going to tighten these all up. I've got a pair of pliers and a screwdriver right here. So that's the, the only other thing that I'm really going to do with this for now. And then later on, you know, other ideas I want to do. I want to paint this box get you know a can or two of some black like semi-gloss maybe so that it matches my engine i think i already said that but i don't know uh, matches my engine and, and looks a little less like whacked together bullshit you know it looks less like a kid's science experiment and more like a legitimate custom built apparatus um if you will and then of course uh, the other idea is to do some kind of mounting solution so that it mounts clamps to the cargo rack itself rather than using the bungee straps to strap it down because i mean that works but again it looks kind of rednecky ghetto whatever verb you or adjective you want to use for something that looks kind of like it's held together with bubble gum and bailing wire so, you know, like, um, I, I kind of want to reroute this one lone positive that's sitting on this side because all my other wires are wrapping around to the right side of my seat post. And I think if I clean that up and just put this one on, wrap it around this way instead of having it coming along this side, that'll let me run my conduit right back here to this center post on my, on my cargo rack. That would probably be the most ideal way to run those wires and then they all just loop up around and connect to my box or wherever they go. But, um, yeah, this is the concept here, folks. This is what I put together and it, it works pretty well. One other thing I did do is I replaced my 10 amp with a 15 amp fuse right there. And that does increase the brightness a little bit of all my lights, uh, increase the brightness of my headlamp quite a bit actually to the point where it actually like provides a little bit of a spotlight it's not particularly bright but the thing about it is it's not necessarily for my own visibility when i ride at night i usually have plenty of street lights around me that i can see where i'm going um my idea with this was visibility from other drivers perspective like other drivers see my headlight coming up the road and go, oh, okay. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's what that is. Cool. <laughs> like, um, yeah, just, just making sure that I'm safe on the road. That's, that's my idea because I don't trust drivers around here, to be honest. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, that's, that's what I did. Hope you like it. Like I said before, you know, like, subscribe, comment, all the interactions. Until next time. Peace.